Tom Ramatowski from Tiverton. I've got a couple of questions and then a couple of comments, so I'd like to go to the questions first. Um, would you agree with me that a toll is a fee for a service? In other words, I pay you a certain amount of money and you in turn provide a service to me, such as a crossing of a waterway or driving from point A to B? Yes, tolls are considered user fees. Right. So what I'd like to ask, and I haven't heard yet, is what is the legal authority, if you can cite any, for charging me for a service I never use. In other words, if I cross the Sakonet River Bridge, I should only have to pay the cost of maintaining that bridge with a little bit of admin and overhead to, to run the operation. Instead, you're telling me that I'm gonna be paying for one bridge, two bridges, maybe all four bridges. Can you cite anything that would legally allow you to do that? Yeah, the federal law allows that to happen. And Can you cite the federal law? I mean, that's very vague, sir. Title 23, the U.S. Code, Section 129. Okay, I'm going to double check that on it. <laughs> you can count on it. Title 23, the U.S. Federal Code, Section 129. And it sounds like there's something wrong there. If we're not using that other bridge, I don't know how anyone could force us to pay for it. Nobody's, nobody's forcing it. It's the, the legislation allows for it. Federal law allows for it. Also, oh, it is your decision then. It's the state made that decision when it passed the budget last year. Well, we'll get back to that at some point. The second question is, um, right now you said that the Jamestown Bridge and both of the old, the old Sakana and the new Sakana Bridge belong to DOT, is that correct? That's right. So there must be some money right now that DOT gets from the gas tax from somewhere to maintain those bridges. The state gets after the, rev the debt service is paid off, the state has about $40 million to do all the operations across the state, all the 800 bridges, all the roadways, and it is not enough to take care of all those bridges. Everything you said that many times, but didn't answer my question with all respect, sir. What I'm asking is, what specifically is the amount of money that the DOT spends right now to maintain the Jamestown Bridge and I guess the new Sakana Bridge, because obviously nothing's going to the old one now, right. but you must be doing something there. What is that amount of money? And should that not cut into what we need to raise by the tolls? The, well, there is no maintenance being done on the new bridge because it's still under construction. The Jamestown Bridge, um, I don't have those figures off the top of my head. We can certainly provide them. 9.7 million. For the Jamestown? That's... For the, uh, the Jamestown Hubble. Total, no, that's, uh, total expenses, 9.7 million. We'll get you those numbers. I guess the question is, it sounds like there's some money here you're not admitting to that's being spent now that's going to be sent to some other uh, place that's being used on these bridges right now that should be used to lower let's the be, tolls for all of them. Let's be very clear. that The, the intent of putting the tolls, very open, intent of putting tolls on the Sakana to cover all those four bridges is that they would have a dedicated source of revenue. You're absolutely right. And so there would not be other state funds that go into the maintenance of those bridges. That's, act, that's exactly what this act, act does. It puts the responsibility on the Turnpike and Bridge, and the, and the revenue for maintaining all four bridges would be from the tolls. And so this, any state um, uh, gas tax that is currently going to the bridges would not go into the bridges. So it's, it's going exactly to go to right. other people in other places it and leave us it, it will go to the rest of the state. Okay. That's right. Uh, you mentioned that there's an 83 cent uh, fee for the Pell Bridge if you use the transponder, the Easy Pass. How much of that 83 cents does the state or, or do you actually get, and how much goes to administering the program? I don't know exactly. I think it's, it's below 10 percent, um, which is the cost of um, um, uh, administration. For is that going to be services? similar to the, the running of this new toll system you described? It's something along that order, Mag, right? and we will have that in the report, but that, that's a good question. Okay, the other thing I had was that you did say earlier that 20% of the bridge deck, it, I think I put bridge deck, length is comprised of these four bridges. Is that's that right. right? That's right. What is the percent that the Zakana Bridge actually comprises of that 20%? That's the smallest of the four. Would it be fair to say 2% or less? Of the 20%? Of the 20%? Of the 20 no, I don't think so. But it's, just, it's simple math. We can get that. Okay, well, it's obviously less than 5% because each of those bridges are bigger than this bridge. So it the looks Mount, very the Mount Hope is longer. It's only a two lane bridge. This is a four lane bridge with all the so it's much closer to Mount Hope. And six, six but you also pointed out the age of some of these bridges makes them more of a burden than these others, which have basically no maintenance costs or very low because they're new. That's right. Right. So over time, you're asking they, the they will also be old. 
Well, I'm hoping you take better care of this one than you did of the last one. That's why we're, that's why we're finally right here to do it. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is you're trying to bend, of course, the, the bridge that's the smallest, the cheapest, the easiest to maintain to carry the burden of, of, of paying for all these other bridges. I don't know how in the world that's fair. And I hope you take that into consideration when the decision is made about how much money is being charged for all of these things. And then finally, I'm a little, even though right now the Pell Bridge has this 83 cent fare or whatever it is, if you have a transponder, I can remember a few years ago it was $2 cash. Now it's $4 cash. It doubled in the last few years. And now you're telling me that's not even enough for those bridges. And it really worries me about no matter what we set as the initial rate, I mean, we're seeing the Pell Bridge rate shoot up at a, a yeah. non-linear rate at more like an exponential rate. And that really worries me. Yeah. Now, um, toll rates would need to go up over time to cover the costs. That is true. Okay. And it's hard to predict what that is. Now, I guess my comments would come down to this, that it's already been mentioned before. And uh, Senator Felix, who I guess left, was, was a good person to mention this. But there are options to doing the tolling. One thing that hasn't been pointed out, I work for the federal government. We haven't had a raise in a couple of years due to the presidential freeze on our salaries. Yet last year, my, my taxes in the state of Rhode Island went up significantly. There was a stealth tax increase of non-trivial proportions, so much so that they're predicting a surplus this year in the budget. Um, I think we need to look at that and say, we've already increased the taxes on the people quite a bit, and maybe that money in the surplus should go into this deficit or running the bridges. That's one option. The other option is that people have said is that you don't raise taxes. It's a self-defeating loop. You have to lower them in a small state like this because we're so small. If we raise our taxes, and right now we've got a high gas tax and the highest sales tax, people will go and buy those things in other states. It's half an hour away at most. What we need to do is actually lower those rates considerably, and then everybody in the state will buy their gas here. What percentage of people do you think buy their gas in Rhode Island right now when 20, 30, 15 minutes away you can save 20 cents? Very few. How many people buy big significant items here when we have the highest sales tax? Very few. But if we lower that, we'll get everybody in Rhode Island and considerable amount from these other states coming in. And I think you will more than make up the revenue that you would lose by lowering the rate by this volume and this huge increase of everybody coming home and buying their stuff here. And I don't think that's been looked at. And uh, I think that your analysis where you said that, well, people, the reason the gas tax is lower is that people simply aren't driving enough is wrong. What people are doing is saying gas is so darn high, now it makes sense for me to go to Massachusetts and buy it rather than buy it here at that higher price. Just, and that reflects your decrease. Well, I just would comment, nationally, that's the <clears> case. It's not just about Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Nationally, what the revenue coming in from the federal gas tax is going down as well for the same reason. Partly because of the economy, partly because of increased motor vehicle efficiencies. It's not a Rhode Island issue, it's a national but issue. But this is a very special case again. We are so small. In this town, anybody can go to Fall River or somewhere in Mass and save a lot of money instantly. It's a very different situation than if you're in Texas where you drive eight hours and you're still in the same state. Here you drive 30 minutes and, and you're in another state. So we have to be very sensitive that if we're the high tax, we are going to suffer. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing. Now, just to, to finish up, I don't mean to take all this time, but I did want to reemphasize that I'm very much, as you can probably tell, against this. I've seen a lot of dumb decisions by our elected officials since I moved here in 1998, and this one ranks up at the top really because it's just fundamentally unfair to this area. You've even mentioned that 80% of the bridge deck in the state is going to be covered by everybody's taxes. The 20% what happens to be largely down here is going to have to be covered by us again. It's a double taxation. Uh, I don't think that's fair at all, and that's what really upsets me the most about it. And I predict that you're going to get blowback from it that you don't realize that people will make economic decisions to buy things elsewhere, buy gas elsewhere, and you'll find that the revenues really just continue to drop and continue to go down. And we need to consider doing something different to do that. And then finally, I'll just leave you with this thought for the governor and the legislative people that are not here and chose not to show up. It just reminds me of the words of Joe Sobrin when he talked about politicians when he said that when most politicians wrestle with their conscience, they usually win. Thank you. Any final address on that to the president?
Just two very quick points. I just want to make sure that the, the, the federal and the state officials who are considering this keep in mind. One of them is that sometimes when you have these hearings, there's a very loud vocal minority that show up. It needs to be clear, this is not a loud vocal minority. This is about a 99% majority in the town of Tiverton. We, we saved the chair for the person that's going to be supporting <laughs> right. as, so. as you saw, there, there, there's a, if there's anybody in town or in, in this area who supports it, it's very few. So this is not a, a small minority. This is 100% of the elected officials. This is at least 99% of the residents and probably 100% of the businesses. So this is not just some small, loud minority. The other thing is, I think there's sometimes with these things, there's a sense that, well, once it's in place, people will go away. This sort of anger will dissipate and people will accept it and move on. I think that's important to understand that this is not going, that's not going to be the case here. I don't get the sense. I think tonight is, is pretty good evidence of that, that this is going to continue, that this is only going to escalate after it's put in place. If this is put in place, I think the opposition is going to escalate. I think the state's going to be opening a can of worms by doing this. And I think it's important that they understand this is not just some one-time thing. This is something that's been going on for years. We've been told tolls weren't going to come. We were assured of that the last time this happened, and now we're, we're being told this is basically a done deal. So I think it's important that, we, that those two points are known so that uh, this isn't seen as just some one-time thing. There is this, this vast and very uh, vocal opposition, and it is going to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lewis, hello. told you I'd be here tonight. I hope you're ready for round two. Um, thank you for coming. I apologize if I was a little vocal last night. I'll probably get that same way tonight. That's why I'm apologizing first off. Um, one thing I'd like to clarify, I know you said it earlier, is one of the reasons why we're here and we're in this predicament is of the elected legislature that approved the budget that approved everything within the budget to include that's right. the, the, the transition of the Sakana Bridge over to the Turnpike and Bridge Authority. Okay, I would like to say to the elected legislature, it seems there's only one left, okay, you stand here before us tonight, you are one of them that voted for the budget, which approved the transition of the bridge. Okay, we, as an elector, you did not have the ability to be voted out of office because you ran unopposed, okay? We will be watching. If you say you're with us and you're against this toll, okay, it, establish your credibility because right now, everybody who can look up your voting record and the voting record of the other gentlemen that voted for this, okay, your credibility is zero, okay? As far as we're concerned, you stood with Piva Weed in Newport, okay? Prove us wrong. Stand with us. If it comes up in the budget again, vote it down like Mr. Felak did. It seems the only people of our elected legislators that has any credibility right now is Mr. Felag and Mr. Edwards. He voted against Article 20. Article 20, I have it right here. He voted no. Well, I have, I have the thing from the Secretary of State's website. It says Article 20, and it says Edwards, nay. He voted for the budget, but he voted to remove and the individual. That's he neither here nor there. The, the other thing I would like to point out, okay, you said earlier in Portsmouth that the Sakonet River Bridge is going to be a low maintenance bridge, correct? It was designed to have um, as low maintenance as possible, yes. I just looked on the website, now correct me if I'm wrong, all lights on the Sakonet River Bridge, the new bridge, were supposed to be LED. Am I wrong? I don't know. I think the, the, dec the decorative lights are LED and the, and the highway lighting. Yes, they're LED. Well, uh, has anybody checked the lights on the poles? The lights on the poles are metal, regular metal halide lights. I know that because I'm an electrician. Yeah. I came over that bridge when those lights were coming on. LEDs do not have a pulse to them. They just come on. My next question, 
as you, as you were, as the people, I don't know if there were many people that were at the, the meeting last night. Mr. Lewis cannot be held accountable for the past Rhode Island debacles with bridges. Okay, I proved that last night. He is not a native of Rhode Island. He is from Canada. We cannot hold that against him. The one, the one question we would all like to know, how long are we going to have to look at the old Sakonic River Bridge before it is gone? Is it going to be tur turned into another Jamestown Bridge it, in, until it's finally forced by the Coast Guard to have it torn down? No, we're going to go out um, with a contract next year for the demolition, and we have a um, uh, Coast Guard permit to have it removed. Have the contract go out within one year of the completion of the new bridge. So it's already budgeted. It'll come down. Are we going to get any revenue from the scrap? <laughs> no, it's a great question. The, the scrap, the salvage value of the steel will work against the cost of dem demolishing it. So it, the, the, the bid will reflect the value of the steel. Now, as an environmental impact of that, I just realized, you know, I'd heard it being brought up that there was lead paint used on that bridge. Is all the lead paint going to have to be removed before anything can happen with that bridge? It's going to have to be encapsulated and protected under the DEM um, requirements for environmental remediation. The one co last comment I would like to make for the public that, you know, is pretty much a lot, been, a lot of negative. A lot of people have been saying that this is pretty much a done deal. Just remember, a lot of people said the same thing about Weaver's Cove in the natural gas terminal. If you remember right, Weaver's Cove still has not happened. That's pretty much off the, we've never heard anything of it. So everything can pretty much change. Thank you, thank, thank you for being here. John Paglarini, I'm a resident of Tiverton, and for the federal reviewers, I too can cite legislation. 2003 Public Law, Chapter 376, Section 8, authorized the funding for the Sakonic River Bridge to the tune of about $125, $130 million. That same section authorized $170 million for Route 403, the gateway to Quonset Point. I would hope that consideration has been given since Section 10 of that same chapter authorizes tolls on any port project to Quonset Point that Quonset Point has been reviewed and rejected for tolls and not just the Sakonic. What I think the reviewers should look at is the economic impact to our communities. I'm sure Quonset Point was off hands because it's a job engine. But I'm also sure that when you add the impact of communities in the Newport County area, we equal or exceed the number of jobs at Quonset Point. Additionally, Route 195, one of the major points was rebuilding the city of Providence because Route 195 severed the community. Streets were up to an embankment on one side and it just severed the city. An unintended or possibly intended consequence of a toll on this bridge will sever our community. Yes, technically we are multiple communities, but Newport County is essentially one community. And the reviewers do need to factor that in. I was in the town of West Greenwich today. Gas was 379. You go to Cumberland Farms across from Lee's Market, it's 338. So I think you do need to give consideration to the gas tax and what the price of gas is. And finally, for the reviewers and the economic impact, I recently invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in the town of Tiverton to demolish the Ranger School. I have intentions of investing millions of dollars on that site and hoping to bring back an economic engine to Bliss Corners. I'm appalled by a traffic study that tells me 21% of my potential market may have just gone away if this is impacted. The economic impact is significant to this area. Thank you.
Susan Anderson. I live in Tiverton. Um, I didn't see any advertisement for a forum like this in Bristol. Are you going to hold one like this in Bristol? Because it impacts them too. Yeah. Um, that's not our intention. The, the, the two locations are selected um, here and in Portsmouth. Um, an advertising local press. Though, that was the intention to be able to get people from that each of those areas to one of one or both of these meetings. Did Bristol go to Portsmouth? There was there. There's people from Bristol here now. A couple other people commented tonight. From Wouldn't there be more people from Bristol in Bristol? <laughs> um, one would think yes. So I I really think you should think about because this is your one of your things is to hold these forums during this month. Mm -hmm. You have it in Portsmouth, you have it in Tiverton. Bristol is also going to be severely affected because of the traffic. If you put tolls on this, sailors like me that, that have to crew on boats that are kept in Bristol and Warren, students that go to school in Roger Williams or at Salve, I mean, they're also impacted. So I, I really think strongly that you should, you should have a forum in Bristol. That's, that's my thought. My other comment, um, has I see one senior citizen has has um, come up um, before me. Um, I'm a trustee for the Bliss Four Corners Congregational Church in Tiverton, and um, I was was pleased to to finally meet the one one that was the developer that just bought the school across from the church, um, and kind of know what he's going to do, but. We have a small congregation, about 25 if we're lucky, and that includes Sunday school kids. So we don't have that much money coming in. We hold bazaars, we hold um, suppers, we have musical events on Sunday nights once a month. A lot of our people come from the island, they come from Bristol, Warren, and we're going to lose a lot of the people for our events if we have a toll because a lot of our people that come are elderly. We also have a very elderly congregation, and some of them live on the island, and we're gonna lose them. Some of the elderly that's in our congregation have already told me that they've even changed doctors off the island to Fall River or someplace else in Massachusetts because they, they won't be able to afford the toll because they can't, they live on fixed income and they cannot afford the transponder or anything to go on the island for anything. So the elderly are very, very affected. I know for sure that one of them, um, um, I emailed her and she's in Georgia right now, but um, she has already changed her doctor. So there's a lot of people affected, the elderly specifically, and our church. We just celebrated our 120 years. I'm hoping we're gonna keep our doors open for another, but without, income from people, it's it's going to be hard from people that come off the island. Good evening, Ms. Lewis. My name is Tom Lowney. I'm from Fall River, Massachusetts. I work in Rhode Island. I'm a Marshall Point, 20-year Navy veteran. I use the facilities in Newport. My family travels back and forth over this bridge very often. I use it to go to work occasionally and Adding the toll is not making economic sense. I'm sorry, you show numbers, you show perspectives, but you're not taking in the demographics of Fall River people, them traveling, veterans as well. There are a lot of veterans in here that use a Newport facility. It's very crowded at times with veterans, not just active duty. You're losing out on those people who want to come down here, use this facility, spend a day in Newport, use the commissary, stop at a restaurant, play tourist, it all adds to the economy of the area, which means tax money, which pays for the bridges. The way you're doing this is you're putting a stranglehold on the people. I'm a concerned neighbor of Tiverton because I have family in Tiverton as well and friends all throughout Newport. When I can't just simply drive down a few miles to go see them, I have to pay someone on a bridge that all my life and all the people here had that opportunity to do. Suddenly you're putting a toll on it, you strangle the island. And you say the mid, there'll be a minimum impact on Mount Hope Bridge. So I run a, um, on a easy ride, uh, a van service that Quonset Point provides. I talk to everyone on there and they live at various points all around the area. 
they're totally against it because it's strangling them. They will find another way. The young lady was just here, it's gonna affect Bristol, it will. Because a lot of people I work with say, well, screw the bridge, I'll go around through Bristol. The impact on there is not being fully evaluated as well. I don't wanna stop giving my business to Newport, but like so many people said, you got Fall River, Dartmouth, Somerset. It's a 15 minute ride. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. You're strangling the local economies. Friends of mine who are right on the border. I, I'm two minute, uh, 10 minute walk from the Tiverton border. And if I want to go to a nice restaurant, I've considered and gone down to Newport, Newport Playhouse and so forth. It's right there, great, go. Eight dollars, eight dollars doesn't seem like much. But for someone who's on fixed income, and it's their only chance to get there, you just turned them away and sent them to Fall River, Dartmouth. I even consider going to Haskins for military services if I have to pay tolls here, which means I don't spend time in Newport. My money goes to Massachusetts. I'm just concerned that this South Coast here is getting a bum rap with this. And what I'm seeing is the people complaining about the rest of Rhode Island. You're paying for that bridge, so you're stuck with it. That's what you're telling me. It doesn't make any sense. From an outside perspective, you, you've checked them off. I mean, this is part of the public record, and I feel like I should be part of it, because I consider Rhode Island partly my home as well. I don't get a chance to vote, but I do pay taxes here. I do have to travel through, and it just seems unfair. You're taxing them, yet the rest of the state gets a free ride on their bridges. They multiply, you show them the damage. I see it every day, I travel these highways daily. I see all the repairs that have to be done. It's disproportionate to the people here. Your analysis considers facts that you want to consider to justify your case, but who justifies their case? Who brings the statistics and factors from what these people have to go through? Put that in there. The economic factor is so critical, it's ridiculous. Uh, you remember what happened when the Navy pulled out of here? When they shut the Navy base down? The economic impact that had nearly crushed this area. You could buy land cheap as dirt because nobody wanted it. You start strangling your flow, it's a trickle effect. Many people already come here and say, the Chamber of Commerce from Fall River. They're dead set against it, why? We're interconnecting. Fall River, Tiverton, Newport, Low Compton, Westport, all interconnected, we depend on each other. It's kind of a neighborly New England thing. Adding this toll is gonna crucify low income. The upper income don't care, they'll pay it. You have more tourists coming down here from Quebec, Montreal, Maine, Vermont, they're not gonna come down here when they see a toll. They'll go to another tourist attraction. This area is dependent on that. It should be an important factor that you're negating. It's not being given enough factor into your process, as well as those who would stop. I'm coming here as a concerned citizen for both these areas because I'm telling you, the toll goes up, my business goes elsewhere. It's a bottom line. Business tells you that they'll sing pretty songs and do dances for you. But the bottom line is, if I have to pay $8 every trip, on top of already the expense, I'm gonna look elsewhere if it's there. Thank you for the time. Thank you, y'all have a good night. Okay, Brady, James J. I come from Little Compton. My family's been there for almost 200 years. I belong to several organizations in Newport, the Artillery Company of Newport, the Newport Rifle Club. I do things with the, the Masons uh, Lodge over there. And I work every single day, five days a week, sometimes seven days a week at Quonset Point, Rhode Island. Now that's a 47 mile trip from Little Compton. That's 94 miles a day round trip so that I can work and make a living to sustain myself. I spend a tremendous amount of money in gasoline 
And ever since 1969, when the bridge has been opened, I bought tokens and across the transponders for my, ve for my vehicles. Adding more tolls to those of us that work, and there are many of us from Little Compton that work at Electric Boat at Quonset Point. There are many of us that, from Tiverton that work at Electric Boat. Mr. Lowney that just left here lives in Fall River. He drives to Electric Boat. We have people that come in from Fairhaven. We have people that come in from New Bedford that drive over the Sakonet River Bridge, Portsmouth Middletown, over the Newport Bridge, over the Jamestown Bridge, just so they have a means of employment because employment is so destitute in this whole area. At least at Electric Boat, we've got something good. We've got something for many, many years. Uh, I'll get into something else later. But nevertheless, this is going to have an impact on us. You talked about maintenance, Mr. Lewis. Again and again, you talked about maintenance. We know that the suspension bridges expose steel to the saltwater atmosphere, have to be continually sandblasted, have to be continually primed, multi unit type finishes where you've got to have the binders, the pigment, you've got to have the dryers, you've got to have the epoxies to make it safe in a, a salt water environment. Fine. The Jamestown Bridge is no longer entirely exposed to a salt water environment. When that was fabricated in Davisville, and many of the people from Local 37 that worked on it, I talked to, all of the steel, the cables, the anchors, everything is encapsulated inside the concrete structure. It doesn't require sandblasting. It doesn't require the finishing. The maintenance is much lower than an exposed metal structure bridge. Now we've got the brand new Sakana bridge. You've got the corrugated steel over the box girders. You've got the concrete base, you've got the rebar, you've got the asphalt on top of that. But more important, you've got the core 10 steel box girders. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Let me explain something real quick. I wish everybody was still here. Because each and every one of you represent at least 100 people that feels the way you do who couldn't get here. Core 10, when it's rolled, the magnesium, the nickel, the alloys that are put in it allow it to surface oxidize. Once that oxidation is there, it is sealed. It's almost like the old 18th century days of your brown best muskets. Once the metal was browned, it was protected from the atmosphere. The Sakana River Bridge is not going to require sandblasting and painting. It's not going to require the high maintenance or the tremendous amount of money that we spend in the suspension bridges. And yet we keep looking for more and more money. Now, something else that, you know, you, you talk about the federal, the federal mandates, the federal laws that, that cover what you're doing. But when this whole thing was started back in 1663, the, the whole concept of Rhode Island, this lively experiment, and many years later when the Rhode Island Constitution was formed, Every inhabitant of the state of Rhode Island was given absolute free, free movement throughout the state without being taxed, told, or inhibited in any way. The waterways of the state of Rhode Island were to be kept free. The rights of the fisheries, the rights of transportation for every inhabitant in the state of Rhode Island without fees, without tariffs. When we put pilings, when we put any type of a structure in the water and we're crossing the water, we're actually going against the own, our own standards of the, of the Constitution of the state of Rhode Island. Okay, An another issue. Now, we're not going to get into the failure of all the years of the old 1957 bridge. It's a crying shame that we couldn't. We talked about out-of-state concerns. When I filled out my paperwork for the transponders, the address of the owners of the transponders that I paid for is a New York, uh, a New Jersey concern. So some of my money was going to the state of New Jersey for those transponders. But there hasn't been anything said about that here tonight. These people that we're here tonight are the important ones because they represent we the people. And in all honesty, 
we the people have had enough. We've absolutely had enough. I work for a living. It's about time you and all the state officials actually do what you're paid for. And that's from a hardcore veteran. Dr. Lewis, again, thank you for being here and spending all this time with us. Uh, I'm actually here as a proxy for my wife, who is the uh, human resource officer for C Corp, which is a defense cop, uh, contractor in Middletown. And the letter is from C Corp, and it says, Dear Mr. Lewis, our company, C Corp, is recognized as one of Rhode Island's fastest growing private companies, offers systems engineering and advanced software services and products test and evaluation services, and innovative technology research and development to a broad range of clients within the defense and manufacturing industries. As the human resource officer at C-Corp, I want to inform all parties concerned, including the Federal Department of Transportation and the Governor of Rhode Island that the proposed toll on the Sakonet Bridge would have a financial impact on our employees, especially the employees that live in Tiverton and Little Compton communities. These employees would have to pay the toll tax to get to work in Rhode Island or have to go through Massachusetts to go to Warren and Bristol to access, access Aquidneck Island, which would be a longer commute by more than double the time now. We are just one of the many defense contract companies on Aquidneck Island that would be affected, plus the small businesses that our employees use on a regular daily basis, such as restaurants, shops, cleaners, etc. The financial and economic effect on the Newport County, especially Tiverton, Portsmouth, and Little Compton, has not been fully analyzed by the state, by Rhode Island Department of Transportation, just counting how many vehicles travel the bridge and what the revenue stream could bring. This toll tax will have a devastating effect on all the residents of Tiverton and Little Compton, which could cut those communities off from the rest of the state. Imagine if a toll tax was put on the Jamestown Bridge and the Jamestown residents had to pay a toll tax to get to other communities of Rhode Island, and what an outcry that would cause. Well, this proposed toll tax is doing the exact same thing to Tiverton and Little Compton residents. Attached is a breakdown of the current use of the Sakonet Bridge by C Corp employees, plus an analysis of the toll tax, if enacted, the results of less use of the Sakonet Bridge by our employees. Sincerely, Nancy Roderick, Human Resource Officer. And we want that put into the record. Great, thanks so much. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Don Gomez, uh, School Committee Chairman, Little Compton. I briefly spoke last night. Uh, my primary concern was the students we service and uh, their, their contract and in, in the uh, with the Portsmouth school system and their support system, their parents, etc. Sitting through two nights of this, uh, I think my views expanded on, on a couple of comments that I would like to make. Uh, I won't take a lot of time. I, I would note that a, uh, a day or so ago, I turned 69. In excess of 50 years, I, I've lived my whole life in the area. Uh, my family also goes back hundreds of years. Uh, but I, I've spent over 50 years in my community, serving my community either as a volunteer, an appointed official, or once I retired from working for the Navy, the Hatch Act no longer applied, and, and I became an elected official on a couple of occasions. Um, my motto is, uh, is, is one of, uh, of leave it better than you found it. It's, it's a stewardship. And I, and I really wish our legislators and politicians in the state of Rhode Island would, would use that motto, we'd be a lot better off. Uh, the initial concerns I had were our 130 students currently at Portsmouth, excellent school, AP programs, great program, uh, sports programs, uh, I, I really can't say enough about it, and we're very close. Um, Many uh, of their parents work on the island. The students, because of extracurricular activity, make repeated trips back and forth through the course of a day, even Saturdays and Sundays, for different events. The tolls would add up. Uh, 
for, for those students that go on from Portsmouth and happen to go to URI, they've got another bridge to go over uh, coming back and forth, generally speaking, on the weekend. The, the tolls definitely impact that. And, and the question gets to be, you know, will, will the added taxes uh, impact our decision to stay in Portsmouth? Uh, we're in a contract arrangement. We were a couple of years into a, a, a contract that runs for five years and then an option for a second five. If, if the parents get uh, too upset with, with these added burdens, these added costs, then, then we have the option uh, of moving off island and, and changing the contract. That, that brings into account, we, we are about 14% of the population at Portsmouth High School, which is reasonably significant. Uh, we put good kids over there, they're happy to have them. Uh, but we get into an issue called the critical mass. The projections on school enrollments uh, are going down. Projections out for 10 years, we've just done some studies uh, it, on, on the renovation project that we're in and how big should the resulting school uh, be. And if you look at projected enrollments, they're going down. If you look at Tiverton, they're somewhat below critical mass and yet they have to operate their infrastructure. The cost per student goes up. Uh, the cost for the infrastructure stays the same. You end up having to sacrifice possibly sports programs, AP courses, things like that. Middletown is borderline at critical mass. If we were to pull 14% uh, percent of the students out of Portsmouth High School, that would put them very close to critical mass and there would be an impact. And the impact goes to their taxpayers. So that, that's one of the impacts that you're probably not looking at. But that there's a cost not only of losing business, but losing critical mass and things like your high school systems. Um, I, I, you know, why, why are we determined to put the cost of these bridges on the backs of our local, our local taxpayers? The uh, term cash cow has been used, it comes to mind again. Uh, the cost really does need to be spread across the whole state. It, it's a common problem, despite what the person from Lincoln, who's supported very well by, by a casino uh, and has one of the better high schools in the state of Rhode Island, uh, had to say earlier tonight. Uh, I got a, I, I'm a member of this Coastal Resources Management Council. This project came in front of us to be permitted. I permitted it. I was one of the persons that voted for the permit. I understood it was necessary. The present uh, deterioration of, of the existing bridge, the numbers that I saw on the amount of traffic going over a bridge design for 12,000 cars, uh, and I think the present bridge is, is closer to maybe 60,000 cars, and there's an improvement on, on the amount, the carrying capacity, obviously. Uh, and there was a good mitigation program involved. We end up with a park, we end up with some public access uh, for our citizens to get to the, to the uh, fishing areas, to the waterfront, and those types of things. Um, so I voted. Now that it appears that it's a cash cow, I wish I could have my vote back, because I, I, I think it was, it was presented in, in not good faith. I think it was in bad faith. The, uh, a, a couple of anecdotes, uh, I, ha I happen to have a budget brother that's rapidly approaching 90. A World War II vet, came out with a GI Bill, became a civil engineer. He worked for McGuire out of Providence and was a design engineer on the present bridge. And, and a few years ago, I used to like to bust them about engineers don't outlive their bridges. And, and he'd get very upset and he'd say, damn it, all they would have to do was take the sand off and clean out the scuppers. It was designed to, to transfer the water and the salt in, into areas where it would not corrode the steel. It was a matter of simple maintenance. It did not get done. And as other people have noted tonight, you know, is it going to happen again? And I understand the low maintenance design and a lot of things. But is this another bait and switch? Uh, a, second, a second anecdote, and 
maybe uh, it'll be my last one. Uh, I just had the privilege to be in Europe for a couple of weeks about a month ago. I ended up in Spain for a couple of days in Barcelona. Europe has lots of pickpockets. I was coming out of a church. Uh, somebody's hand was in my pocket. It was the wrong pocket, but I caught them. Under 18, they're not prosecuted. I had a, a feeling that I didn't like at that time, and I'm getting that same feeling again. Uh, so, uh, uh, and I hope we're not headed down that path. Little Compton on a small scale could offer some guidance, I think. Um, a number of years ago, uh, I was council president, 2002, I think, around that time frame, and the school budget every year came up against the cap, the allowable cap in the, ta in the state, and in one year, they came in and wanted to increase that by 10%. Uh, obviously, it caused a rebellion among the Taxpayers Association and various, various people, uh, led to three, three nights of, of, of very uh, uh, much worse than this, <laughs> let me tell you. And uh, as a result of that, uh, I, I decided that maybe I should run for the school committee where we spent most of the money for the town. We ended up with a business manager. We did a, we did a financial audit, uh, a fiscal audit. We implemented some new policies and procedures. And since that time, uh, over the last four years, we've level funded three. We put a million plus surplus into a bank to, uh, to, in reserve while increasing our programs, our academics, and our extracurricular activities. It just takes fiscal responsibility and, and people that care. So uh, again, I think that that's something we really need to think about. My last three thoughts on this, as I listened to two nights of this, cash cow, figures don't lie, liars figure, and, and I think it's a done deal. I hope it isn't. Thank you for your time. I'm Tony Lawrence, uh, Sakonic Point, Little Compton. I've been down there 45 years, and i totally against the toll on this bridge. I had an aunt that was in a nursing home over here in Newport. She was there for eight years. From Little Compton to Sakonic Point to where she was was a 30-mile trip. So that's 60 miles round trip. And I did the Sakonic Point Bridge at that time. She passed away after eight years. At this time in my life, I'm 81 on a fixed income. If she was still there, I don't know if I could get to see her very often. So we have to watch what we're talking about. The elderly, the young, the schools, everything. Uh, I have a question. I've been to the two meetings, and they've drawn a great crowd. Now, all this import, who's going to be listening to it, and who's going to decide what these people have put into this? Are we going to listen to it, or are we just going to put it in the wrong trash barrel? I'm listening. Y'all listening? I'm listening. And who are the other people that are going to be listening? and watching that screen. My staff is listening. Yep. And we'll be preparing a document and we'll be sharing that with the Federal Highway Administration. Senator De Palma here, I know is listening. Yep, okay. And the governor will be listening as well. well that's what I'm getting to. Okay. Because uh, I will talk to him. Do you know how many bridges are in, little, uh, are in the state of Rhode Island? Just short of 800. Just short of 800. Do you know where the state of Rhode Island is placed in bridge maintenance and bottom, deterioration? Bottom five in the country. Number one. Bottom five. I read it in the St. Pete Times in Florida. Rhode Island is number one for deteriorated bridges. Look into it. Uh, this is a great state. I moved from Massachusetts 45 years ago to take a job at Sakana Point. And the state itself 
You know how much attracts the people here? It's the 400 miles of seashore. For this small state, 85 long and 45 wide, how come so many people come here? Well, I, I, I'm off a couple of miles. <laughs> okay. This is to the Rhode Island government that makes the rules and the laws for the people that pay their salary. If you, if you do the public an injustice, you, you will be and should be voted out of your office. That will be the payback. In the end, that will be the tolls that ring the bell. If you made a mistake in the tolls for the Sakonic Point Bridge, a tunnel would have been cheaper. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe Medeiros. I listened to every pylon whacked into the ground. I watched every piece of steel go up on that bridge. I live just south of Riverside. I also had a business in town that every time the state raised the liquor tax or raised the cigarette tax, my business went down. I've been watching your body language and the body language of your people here. I don't think you guys care. This is foregone. I can afford the tolls. I can afford to go over at the $4 toll all day long. But I have the luxury of affording not to go over. I can go anywhere I want. If I want to go ride in Newport, I'll go down to Falmouth Heights. It's just as beautiful. I don't need to go over that bridge. But a lot of people here do. You're crippling. Not everyone has the luxury that I have. So, think about it. I think you're eyebrow deep into this yourself. I think it's foregone. I watched the body language. You watched my body language two nights in a row stand up here for three hours <laughs> to listen. No, one night. Okay. Um, I just take exception to that. Okay, it's fine. But I think you're really, really highly involved in this, and I think it's a foregone conclusion. Thanks for your input. You show a lot of stamina, right? You know, I uh, appreciate you listening to us. I think it's, it's important that I am here to listen to you and to hear you, you know, each of you. So well, I, I take it very seriously. Well, it's just, you know, I, I've been in business a long time and I've been screwed a lot of times. So uh, people I trust, I've been screwed by. So you can stand there and it doesn't mean I'm dead. I understand. Uh, but you seem like a decent guy with a strong bladder. But, uh, I'm, I'm afraid you're working with, uh, you know, they with a bunch of gangsters at the state house. It's a corrupt government. The politicians in this uh, state have destroyed the state. It's unfortunate. It's a beautiful state. I'm sorry, but it's a it's you know it's a beautiful state, but it's been destroyed by politicians. Uh, they got their hands into the, the pension funds. Uh, they'll just bleed this state dry. If you knew, if you lived down here and knew the community, knew the people, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be on that side. You would have nothing to do with this place. Um, okay, a couple of things. The cost, the cost of the bridge to my family is only about 1200 a year. My son, uh, my youngest at Portsmouth High, so he goes to Portsmouth probably seven days a week. He's on the hockey team, he's got friends over there, part-time jobs over on the island. So that's a cost. My wife has a business in town in Tiverton. She knows that's going to affect her also. My oldest son is at URI, so he's constantly going back and forth over both bridges. All right, just a couple of things I want to mention. Mass, uh, Mass Pike Harbor Tunnel, they have three rates. Their top rate is, if you're a cash payer, it's $7. The easy pass is $6. They also have a community resident rate, it's 40 cents. It's only 6% of the total. Would that be considered for, uh, say, the, the Washington uh, 
I mean, uh, Newport County, because we're only like 7% of the population. Yeah, I think there, there's a lot of ability to look at what the discount rates are. I, th I think the, the Harbor Tunnel is 350 I think. It's not, it's not $6. I read off the one this one. This is the Mass Pike Harbor Tunnel. Yeah. I go off the website. That'd be commercial. But anyway, anyway, anyway I think the Tol I think, I think Tolbert Bridge, I think, is $3. All but the anyways, are the same price. I've got it written right here. Yeah. Good. And uh, it's six percent, so that would work out for us to be like twenty-five cents. All right. I uh, just want to state that. Uh, the other thing you, to look to get money, uh, we our ethanol. I don't know if anyone knows. I'm trying to call the state department, DOT. But what's our percent of ethanol mix? Is it fifteen percent? You sure? Because I, I know I talked to a couple of gas stations. They said it was fifteen. New England, is, New England is uh, 10, I believe, but the cherry upped us up. They pushed us up to be equal with California, and I thought we were the only state in New England. So I'm not sure about that. I'm <laughs> okay, I got, I got, I got, okay, I asked the gas station owner, and he told me it was 15, so anyway, it, it doesn't make much sense nowadays to be using ethanol. Uh, we should be feeding the cows and people with it instead of burning it, and, you know, you know but if we we also would have better uh, gas mileage with uh, regular gas versus ethanol uh, one person just left but uh he bought a car in europe he was getting like 27 miles a gallon there he brought it back he was only getting 20. <coughs> so if we could reduce the ethanol we would have probably some savings there maybe that savings can in throw in as a gas tax would just go towards bridges all right, maybe that could be looked at. I know Maine does something, they have a seasonal adjustment, and for a season, some times of the year, they have a reduction of ethanol. Maybe do that in Canada, I don't know. I think it's done all around. There's a, there's a seasonal variation. Well, we don't do it here, though. I think we do. We do? I haven't seen it. But, you know, I don't know, but good luck. I wouldn't want your job. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is James Zeruda. I'm a resident here in Tiverton, live on East Road, and I'm also a member of the Tiverton Town Council. And I want to actually thank you for being here, and uh, I also would take exception for you and your staff to sit in two nights in a row of probably six hours plus. And also want to give uh, the typing girl over there maybe a little break so it's like a 10 second pause. <laughs> but the computer crashed, so I guess she gets a break. We'll, we'll have somebody take notes while it's down. So. I just wanted to um, first ask you, uh, Mr. Lewis, to help me. And what I mean by that is, I ran for Tiverton Town Council, we have some issues in town, and one of them is our economic development. And we need help in developing our economic development here in town. We have a industrial park that has not been developed probably for a better part of 20 years. And uh, putting a toll in this area, I think would be detrimental to that development of that space. Up on 24, off of 24? Yes, off of 24. So is it possible we can probably get more Massachusetts uh, traffic there? Yes, um, but we want local traffic, all local traffic there as well. I mean, it, obviously it would impact the traffic from Milltown, Portsmouth, and Newport. I think having a toll would definitely hurt the chances of us helping develop that area. With that said, if we're unable to help economic development in this town, we, we then have to ask the residents of the town to continue to pay the share of the taxes to support the services, which is what we do not want to do. We want to type, help alleviate the tax burden that our residents pay for the taxes in Tiburon. I need help with that. So Jim Ruda, A-R-R-U-D-A, is asking Dr. Dr. Lewis. Mike. Not, Sorry, no doctor. Yeah. Uh, no doctor. Maybe, maybe next time. Director. Director Lewis. To ask the governor and the state officials to help me help develop this community, the economic community, not only in Turbidon, but also Little Compton, Portsmouth, where a little pebble drop in a big pond can create waves that can also reach the other ends of the state. So just helping us develop our economic businesses here could also help the state in the long run probably 10 years from now, the, the long-term goals. And also, I want to make a point that we should also consider investing in our people. 
Investing in our people would also not be tolling or taxing us further and helping us develop our own communities. If Rhode Island can invest in, their, in our own people, I think Rhode Island could have large benefits in that because many of us, uh, I, I can speak personal experience that most of my dollars are not spent in town, but are not spent in Rhode Island. We're lucky we have the luxury of living next to Massachusetts. I work in Providence. I have to drive through Massachusetts to get there. Most of the time I'm buying my gas in Massachusetts and probably groceries, liquor, whatever it is that we, that my wife and I buy, I'm buying it in Massachusetts. So if we can find a way to concentrate our resources in Rhode Island to invest in our own people, basically, what I mean by that is we have elected officials, uh, I'm not sure if your position is elected or not, appointed. appointed, that those people are working for us. And I hope that they're reminded that their work for us is to help invest in ourselves. We invest in ourselves, we can make the state better and not have to rely on more and more taxes or revenues to help sustain us. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Chilton, I live in Boston. So you, you're appointed to this position? Yes. Now, how long have you been at, at this position? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. And so the previous DOT guy, he's responsible for the bridge deterioration? I think you've got to look back oh, decades. decades. Okay. Well, it, it goes on and on and on. It just keeps piling. The salt gets piled from this year to the next year. And you guys wear blinders and you say, we thought the Rhode Island uh, Bridge Authority was taking care of it. And they said they thought you were taking care of it when really no one was taking care of it. So you're collecting your salary, I don't know what it is, and you're standing here in front of us, but you're not doing your job. You, you say you cannot take care of the new bridge now, is that true? The DOT cannot take care of the bridge? The DOT does not have sufficient resources to take care of the 800 bridges in the state, including the Nusikana Bridge. Including the Sky River Bridge, which was built very low maintenance. You don't, it doesn't really need very much maintenance. All relative, you, need, relative you have a street sweeper. Relative to the earlier design, that is true. True. So, so I suggest to you, if you can't do your job, you should step down, and we should appoint someone that can do that Thank job. You. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Howard Bennett. Uh, yes, uh, I was here uh, last night in, in in Portsmouth, so I'm sort of a double agent in in this. Last night, I was presenting as a clinical psychologist with an office in Portsmouth that would be uh, adversely affected by the tolls. Uh, tonight I'm here as a resident of, uh, of Tiverton, um, and I have a few comments. I'm going to be brief. I imagine everybody's tired. Me too. Uh, I think home, uh, the values of the homes in, in Tiverton are going to be adversely affected by this toll. Uh, Tiverton is a, is a community that's, that's sought out uh, by people who work on um, Aquidneck Island. Uh, the the, the uh, prices of homes in our community uh, is less uh, than uh, than that on on the island, um, and you know we have a reasonably good school system. Uh, and I'm I'm concerned that if tolls go in, uh, that that there'll be an adverse impact uh, on on uh, the values of our, our homes. Um, another comment that I have. Uh, you and, and your staff have presented uh, a, a very good picture of the factual uh, information in this decision-making process. I think the people here tonight and the people uh, in Portsmouth last night uh, presented the, the social and economic impact. I'm hoping that the governor, who didn't even attend either one of these meetings, to personally experience the pain, the the, uh, the pain that the impact that these tolls would have uh, on on the on the people in this area, we would be selected out to uh, to, to sustain and maintain, uh, you know, an, an inappropriate proportion of uh, of the infrastructure uh, and maintenance costs uh, in this state, um, and I'm hoping that. Um, that, that he will uh, somehow 
uh, if he wasn't here personally, somehow be able to take away, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, the expression of concern and pain so on, on a personal levels and a business level. Um, and my last comment has to do uh, with you know, if if these uh, tolls are going to have an adverse impact on businesses, and we've heard many, many people come up and say, you know, uh, this is the tipping point for my business. I'm, I'm in that category as well. And uh, if these tolls are imposed, uh, the, the burden is gonna be so much that I'm gonna have to consider either closing my doors or drastically uh, you know, reducing uh, my business or, or whatever. The question that I have is that there's a ripple effect. You know, we've talked about the impact on state taxes, but there's also going to be a considerable impact on local taxes because the, the local communities depend on, on the business taxes to offset uh, taxes that they get from the residents and on their homes and, and properties and, and so forth. My question is, uh, and I think this was raised by others as well, where are those monies going to come from? You know, what is going to happen to these towns as, as the business community shrinks, as the income stream shrinks? What's going to happen to the schools? What's going to happen to the, uh, to the roads? What's going to happen to a, a lot of the services that we come to take for granted in, in, in our town? And I don't feel, I strongly, don't feel that, uh, that the, uh, the process that, that was followed in making these decisions makes sense. It seems to me that the cart was put before the horse. The decision was made and then they said, oh gee, we didn't uh, look at these data, we didn't look at those data. This should have been thought through first. These, sh these data should have been accumulated first. Then you make a decision. That's a rational process. And, and that's why I feel that, that, that all of the pain that's been expressed, I'm not so sure it's going to make that much of a difference. And as far as maintaining the, uh, the, the new Sakonic Ridge, I, I think the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And the state built the bridge in 1956, 1957, and neglected it. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen to this new bridge. And I won't be here, but 50 or 60 years from now, people will be here and say, you know, they, they did the same thing to the first Sakana River Bridge, and now they're turning uh, yeah, the second. And so I think this needs to be addressed. We need to hold our legislatures, uh, the, the people who are opposed, uh, uh, who are supporting these tolls, need to hold their feet to the fire. Because I think they're doing a bad job. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Lewis. First thing we'll be saying good morning. <laughs> My name is Lucille Parent, and I am a Tiverton resident. Been here for 34 years. Raised my family. Great place to be. I'm also a civil service government employee. Work at the Naval Base. Have been there for 26 years. Um, I feel that in my job, I have this opportunity to be a voice for a population that has not been addressed at all this evening. Um, I work with the health benefits for the military, and in that, I would like to say whether consideration has been given to all of our active duty service members that have been deployed, our active duty reservists that are within a one hour drive from wherever in the state of Rhode Island and their families. Most of the active duty population that has been deployed, they're not all military officers. They're individuals that are low income. We have a beneficiary population that we service that goes from Cape Cod over to the Brighton, Connecticut. We don't have everything available in Newport. What we have to do is refer them to the civilian community in the area. When we have, and I can honestly say this because I've spoken to many 
beneficiaries. They will not go get services in the civilian community because they have to pay the tolls on the Newport Bridge. They don't have an opportunity to get the easy pass. They're only here for maybe two years, and they can't afford it. They're living paycheck to paycheck, just like many of us are. So for the representatives that are still here from the government and legislators that can help, take this population into consideration as well. And also, they also have to go to the VA medical facilities, the reservists, when they come back. We have many ill, wounded warriors that have given so much for us to be here tonight and live our lives every day. Please remember them. Thank you. Thank you. Chi Laureano, I'm a local um, realtor and I'm a Tiverton resident and I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, I'd like to make some quick uh, remarks. I have a question about a RITBA board meeting uh, in February, February 8th, at which time the uh, Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority uh, Board of Directors voted today during its monthly board meeting for a new toll rates for the Newport Pell Bridge. Um, as well as a request of the Rhode Island General Assembly to allow RIPA to set toll rates for the Mount Hope Bridge. The rates that were approved by the board are a dollar per crossing for residents with an RI Easy Pass and five dollars per crossing for cash and undiscounted Easy Passes. The added revenue RIPTA, RIP, RIPTA says will help for, pay for the 250 million dollars needed to fund RIPTA's capital projects in the 10-year renewal and replacement plan. Seems like a good idea to me, because it was 83 cents, it goes to a dollar, and from four dollars, it goes to five dollars. Um, then it says, last month, the board had tabled a vote on the toll increase at the request of Rhode Island Department of Transportation Director Michael Lewis who is a voting RIPTA board member. Since that January 18th meeting, the governor has announced his support for legislation to trans transfer the ownership of the Sakonet River Bridge and the Jamestown Verrazano Bridge to RIPTA and to toll the former. Um, it says here also that uh, Mr. Darlington said, the two bridges in our care require significant repair and maintenance work to ensure that they remain safe, said David Darlington. We believe it's important to allow drivers impacted by the new rates a sufficient amount of time to plan their budget for the new toll structure. Is that true? Yeah, in February of last year. Um, uh, February of this year, it says 2012. 12. Um, the board voted to, because the, the Turnpike and Bridge, as I mentioned several hours ago now, um, has a shortfall in its revenue to take care of the two bridges it's currently um, needs to maintain. And you just read that. At the same time, the legislation was drafted and being submitted as part of the budget um, to uh, propose this transfer that we talked about tonight. So the two things, you need one or the other, not both. So that was whole, held in abeyance until the legislation passed last June and was signed into law by the governor of July. Well, I'm not that good on math, but it seems it would have been a lot fairer just to raise the rate to a dollar from 83 cents for people that go on the Pell Bridge and five dollars for people instead of coming and trying to put the same rates on our little Sakonic River Bridge. It's something seems inequitable. I'm not gonna stay all night on that, but um, I also have a question. You had it up on your screen. It's the Senate Commission on Sustainable Sustainable Transportation Funding. Perhaps Mr. De Palma can help us with this one. Um, it was a study done. Uh, RIPEC proposed four major multi-year recommendations that include increasing revenue, improving operating economies. Uh, one of them was to dedicate 100% of the gas tax to support transportation. 
Um, and there were several other recommendations. Then I read that this Gupta is in giant trouble. I mean, they're being investigated by uh, the state police. Uh, it says, Mr. Studley says some of the things that are being investigated, he says it's akin to writing a check without knowing how much money is in your account. So it seems like there's not very good uh, uh, directors over there. Um, also, it says the staff could not provide a clear accounting of its stock items, and RIPTA is anticipated to show a significant deficit in its fiscal year 2013 budget. Seems like RIPTA is in giant trouble, and they're Absolutely eating true. and they're eating 9.5 percent of the gas tax. And I agree, and I don't know why. If you guys had this study, and there's all kinds of provisions in here and good work. Why didn't you why didn't you initiate something like that instead of voting for a toll? Long in the shot, you didn't care? One the They're both in the same step. All right. So um, the next thing I want to get to, because I'm being quick. Uh, we've done uh, our own economic study, we began it, and I'm very disappointed that we didn't get a chance tonight to talk to Mr. Gottlieb about his traffic studies. And we, Mr. Hodges, who is from Parsons and Wickenhawk, yep. who is supposedly doing this impact study, he's nowhere to be seen tonight. It's right there. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't get to talk to him either, so you know, I'm very disappointed in that. I think we've been rushed. Uh, we did our own little mini uh, impact study on uh, 18 businesses, and we're doing more, by the way. And on the 18 businesses, there's a total loss uh, of $695,399 in, in business and uh, profits. And that works out to $38,634 each. So I'll be very interested to see when we can present. It should be on, shouldn't it be on the, on the turnpike provision code and website? We can look at it now. It's not. We're, we're, we're taking the input. The studies are complete. Well, what, well, you have to have everything into by January, right? Yeah. So you know, this is December 5th. When are you going to finish it? What? There's a, and there's a, there's a lot to take in from what we've heard both last so night and tonight. We won't have a chance to question it. We will not be told. We won't have another meeting to hear about it, will we see it on the website, who do we go to? We have to find that out. We have to decide that. And it will be available um, for review. And the last thing um, I just want to touch on, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, I would like to speak about the economic impact on Tibetan property owners, should the kind of which shall be approved. Okay, um, this is taken from the uh, statewide multiple listing third quarter study. And uh, for the third quarter uh, enforcement, there were 50 sales at a median price of $335,000. Tiverton had 35 sales at a median price of $212,000. 13 of those were distressed sales. And that's a 30% increase over the same quarter last year. Um, Jamestown had 15 sales at a median price of $550,000 with no distressed sales. The real estate taxes, Portsmouth $14.23 per thousand, Tiverton $18.99 per thousand, Jamestown $9.21 per thousand. The average income, Portsmouth $58,000, Tiverton $49,000, Jamestown $68,000. So how can you look at this community and say that we should be able to pay, and our people should be able to pay a similar rate, when the rate that you're holding down for Jamestown people and Newport people, and Newport, by the way, had um, 51 sales, average uh, median price 400,000 with four distress sales. I think in addition to the total expense, we will devalue our properties and will cause sales and values to decline in a disproportionate manner. The addition of a total expense is an unfair burden to Tiverton property owners. It, it should be noted again that the statewide percentage of distressed properties, this is statewide, 
change was 5.8%, when in Chivin it was 30% increase. So, I mean, these are all economic things that need to be, and I have letters from brokers, and I'm not going to go into it now from time. My name is Joe Susan from Tillian. Thank you for your endurance. I just wanted to say, I read a lot of newspapers. I've been looking at this issue. Uh, it's been mentioned, the unemployment rate in Rhode Island being what it is, over 10%. I've also read that uh, approximately 60% of the people in this state are living paycheck to paycheck and couldn't scrape up $1,000 for an emergency. Uh, if you look at the rents on the island, and this, uh, I'm going to go into why businesses are afraid of this toll, because they feel as though they're going to have a, t a hard time getting employees, particularly in the summer. Rents on the island run twelve, fourteen hundred dollars a month for an apartment. Rents in Fall River run about six, fifty, seven hundred dollars a month. So a lot of the people that are making twelve to eighteen dollars an hour and taking home three to five hundred dollars a week leave the island every day to live off island. And just they can't earn enough money to live on the island with the rents. It's also everything else is more expensive on the island. Food, clothes, anything you buy on the island, you're paying a little bit more. You boil everything. So that's why people live off the island. They can't afford to live on the island, but there's employment on the island. So every day they get in their cars, they drive onto the island. And when I've, I've been working with stocks, kind of toll opposition platform. I've been, I work out in Newport. I work for a roofing company. Three quarters of the guys that work with us, they're making anywhere between 12 to $18 an hour, exactly what I was talking about. We're going to have a hard time getting people to come to work on the island. They're living paycheck to paycheck now. We've got guys that are paying child support that are living in their van over in Fall River. They can't even afford an apartment there. So they, to get them to come onto the island to work is going to put another burden on businesses. We could say, well, we'll raise prices and pay them a little more. We already have a hard time competing with the Fall River market. Not even to mention the elite, the companies that are using illegals that are underbidding us left and right. That's a totally different issue, I understand. But this is the point that, you know, everybody said it. There are other ways to pay for bridge maintenance. And I, for one, am going to be in the legislature this budget season. We're going to be fighting to get more DOT uh, funding. That's the answer. We have to find it in the budget. Thank you. Yes, I have to hold it. Uh, my name is Roger Bennis. I'm from Tiverton, and I have a comment on a meeting notice and the number of people in attendance and several questions. But before I get into that, uh, another thing came up uh, during this meeting, essentially uh, in relation to the governor. Do you know if the governor has sent somebody here other than you? to represent him at this meeting and report to him? Um, I am here representing the governor as the director of transportation and report directly to the governor. Do you have a scheduled appointment with the governor within the next seven days? On this issue, no. I guess that shows us how much interest the governor has in our comments. I would think uh, if he were interested, he'd have an appointment with you tomorrow. If you don't have one in the next seven days, I think that tells us a lot. All right, first, I believe that the number of people in attendance and the number of comments, both in Tiverton and in Portsmouth, has been cut to one half or one fourth of the number of people who could have protested the tolls. Most people could have protested, more people could have protested the tolls if an advance notice had been offered one month in advance. And if the meeting had not been scheduled three weeks before Christmas, and if the notice had indicated that any resident of Rhode Island 
Massachusetts or Connecticut could attend. And if the notice had indicated that written comments could be submitted, if the notice had indicated that an email address and fax number were available, and if a deadline for comments had been listed. So I think you should look at the number of people at the meeting last night and tonight as a small representative sample due to lack of appropriate notice. Second, I believe that although I am a resident of Tiverton, I should protest the toll for the Massachusetts residents who were not properly invited and who could be spending $40 per week just to get to work on Aquidneck Island or in Bristol and back home again if this toll is enacted as described on March 27, 2012. That is roughly the same cost that my family could suffer if the toll is enacted with our cars paying 83 cents per trip. I also have some key questions. Can you tell me how many Rhode Island bridges out of the 748 Rhode Island owned bridges are the same size or larger than the Sakonet Bridge? The Sakonet is the fourth longest, largest bridge in the state. Um, after, the, after the other three in the, in the, in the, in the, of the, of the four we're talking about. Well, how many bridges are roughly the same size? I don't know that. It is the fourth largest. Because I would think in all fairness, the fairness would require that every other similar sized bridge in Rhode Island have similar tolls. Or isn't fairness considered in Rhode Island? It seems strange that the DOT has funding for all Rhode Island and all Rhode Island roads and bridges except the four major Newport County bridges. We don't. That's the problem. We aren't maintaining the 700 bridges that we need to be maintaining. So are you saying then that the toll on the Sakana Bridge would also be supporting some of these other bridges no, that you the, don't have money for? Only the four we're talking about. That's what's in the law. Is the proposed toll on the Sakana Bridge a pilot program for other Rhode Island bridges? No. Uh, you, Director Lewis, made statements to the Newport Daily News in March. Statements indicated that it was your intent to transfer all normal DOT funding from the gas tax and other normal road and bridge funding from Newport and Bristol counties to fund roads and bridges elsewhere in the state. No. Uh, based on a Newport Daily News article, DOT direct, quote, DOT director, Toll needed on new bridge. That was in the March 27, 2012 uh, Newport Daily News. It says, tolls from, it's quoting you as stating, toll from the Pell Bridge and the New Sakana Bridge would be dedicated to repairs of all four Newport County spans with about 10 to 15 million a year reserved for other East Bay Road and Bridge projects, Lewis said. Then you continue saying that would ensure local infrastructure projects do not have to compete for finite state resources. So if they don't have to compete for finite state resources, that indirectly is stating that they would get all the funding for the Newport and Bristol County roads and bridges from the tolls on the two bridges, the Pell Bridge, and the Sakonet Bridge, if you, if leaving all the money that would normally be spent on Newport and Bristol County roads and bridges to be spent elsewhere in the state. If, let, me, let, me, let me clarify that. The law that we taught, the budget, authorized the creation of what was called the East Bay Infrastructure Fund. Um, what we've discussed tonight, what we've heard loud and clear from all of you is, or most of you, is that that's not desirable, Senator Obama that the East Bay Infrastructure Fund is something that is not seen as a, as, a, as a positive for this part of the state. So it doesn't have to be used. And so there is no um, toll money that would go to East Bay Infrastructure. So the rest of the, the road and bridge in the East Bay are in the same category as all the other road and bridges across the state. So we're only talking about uh, four bridges would have a dedicated source of revenue to ensure they're adequately maintained. So when was this decision made? 
which essentially contradicts your March 27th. The March 27th was before the legislation was passed. It was um, the belief that was in the legislation that that would be seen as a positive for the region, that in addition to the revenue that would come from the statewide program, there would be a source of revenue to do additional work in the East Bay. We've heard loud and clear from the East Bay that that's not desired, so that's not what we're doing. The, the reason I bring that up is that it appears that your statements in March implying, not, no, I, I shouldn't say implying, I should say indirectly indicating that there would be money available from the East Bay that would normally be spent there for use elsewhere in the state. It appears that that implication or statement was something that was used to convince the legislators outside of Newport and Bristol counties yeah. to support the idea of a toll because then they could benefit from the suffering of the people in the East Bay. Well, I think you're misconstruing. That was an opportunity to do additional work in East Bay beyond what is available in East Bay and across the state. It was an opportunity to do more here. It was decided that that's not what we want to do, so that is that is not being done. Um, that was the condition in March before the legislation passed. The legislation has passed. We've discussed it with the members of the uh, assembly, and that is not what the desire is. It, it just strikes me that it's very clear cut here that your intent back in March was to take away all the normal funding. No, and, no. And let, let me be place, as, let me be as crystal clear as I can be. It was to add funding. It was to add funding. It was not to take away funding. It was to add funding. Decision is made, but that's not desirable. So that's no longer part of the program. Then I guess you phrased it improperly because I'm a contract analyst. And I look at this as a contract, and your very clearly stated intent <laughs> is to remove is, is Joe Baker funding. I'd love to sit down with you and Joe Baker, and we'll go over that very article. I'd be willing to do that, because I've gone over, I think I figured at one time, several billion dollars worth of contracts and written contract analysis. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Thank you for coming. Um, I've listened to all these comments this evening, and uh, everybody except that one gentleman is opposed to the idea of tolling and for obvious reasons. What's been running through my mind is that we have a very unusual state here, which is a body of water surrounded by the land where everybody lives, and that poses several considerations. In order to connect all of that, we need bridges. And for us to pay tolls to go from one part of the state to the other makes no sense to me whatsoever. Otherwise, we would have to be part of some other land entity. The, the economic impacts and the social impacts have not been addressed adequately by the state of Rhode Island at all. I think leaving Bristol out of the equation, leaving Fall River out of the equation are gross oversights and I would hope strongly that you would look at this again and give us a lot more time before you uh, make a final decision about imposing tolls. It's an extreme hardship on everybody in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Hello Good evening. Thank you. I'm sure you're getting tired of seeing me. This is the third time I have been to one of these meetings held. And I understand your position fully, but I have to tell you, I think that your boss and your associates are totally uningenuous to what we are saying. 
The first meeting I saw you was six, seven months ago, before the law in Bristol, before the law was passed. Maybe you just thought I was a casual guy who didn't, didn't know what the hell he was talking about, but I made it very clear that the economic impact to just the town of Bristol would be devastating. I gave fundamental, factual information to that point. And I gave my card. You know the restaurant, Red Lessons restaurant in Bristol that we own. I have heard from no one, no one. I was CFO of public companies. I was chairman of the board of public companies. I've done your kind of work. This isn't a study. This is just uh, put together some numbers and get the report to the government because a real study would be doing like these politicians were doing. They'd go knock on these small business doors. There aren't 10,000 small businesses in these few towns. There are a few hundred. Nobody's been out to ask. Businessmen and women running small businesses are peddling 70 hours a week to stay alive. They can't sit down and write a report to you. They can't tell you what you need to do. No, you have to go out and get it. The second point that I want to make is last week I suggested the governor should have been here or last yet the other night. Let everyone know and let your friends know the governor was in Bristol last night for the commissioning of the new officials. A number of people who were at that meeting found time to come over here to this the meeting across the way here. Our governor, who was responsible for this debacle, ran home. He had not the guts to stand up here and face us like you. he causes you to keep your job. This man is a coward. I was CEO of a company. When we had a problem with in Boeing where they spilled thousands of gallons of nitric acid and they didn't know whose fault it was. I didn't run and hide and find lawyers to try to find their way around what happened to my company. I got my engineers together at five o'clock in the morning and they t went through what happened and they told me what happened and I got on the next flight to Seattle and burst into their office where their lawyers and accountants were trying to determine who to sue. And I said only one thing, it's our fault and we will fix it. One million dollars out of my pocket later, it was fixed. And the governor should have his body right here at these meetings and he should take responsibility and then he should shut down what's going on here. He's caused the problem, he is the problem, and you have to report it to him. And by the way, if I worked for such an incompetent person, I would resign. You're competent, you know what you're doing. This state does not deserve you. My name is Jeffrey McNally. I'm a resident here in Turbot, and I have hopefully the quickest question of the whole night. Uh, will your slides and this meeting notice be posted someplace on the ROD or uh, yeah, we, DOT we, website? Yeah, we will. We've got to collect, collect all of this and go through it and categorize and go find out what we need to do with, with this analysis. Okay. That will be part of the record when we submit to Federal Highway. So we will post it. It'll be a public document. Oh, it's mainly already oh, the, slides. Oh, the slides. I'm sorry. Yeah, they'll, they'll be on the website. They're probably already on there now, but they will certainly be on the website. Right, thank you. Yeah. Barbara Pelagian, I wasn't going to say anything, but you know what? They should double your salary. No, they should. <laughs> and the other thing is, uh, I, I expected this to be more of a solution-based type of meeting, yeah. and I, I do hope that maybe if you do have another meeting, it would be a focus, not just the same story over and over again. And have you ever thought of selling the naming rights to the Sakana River Bridge? Like on a long-term lease basis? Yeah, that, that, that is less desirable than you might think. 
Um, that was that was contemplated up in Boston on the bridge. Like the, the Gillette Center. Right. Yeah. That, that back in the booming '90s, that was more of a an, an option for people. Uh, I'm not sure that you could really get somebody that would be interested in it. But it's, good, it's, it's still an interesting idea. And you know what? Most of these people don't realize that the first stone bridge, which is upon it is, didn't have a toll on it, and it wasn't abolished until the state took it over. There you go. Many of our early transportation facilities were toll, were toll facilities. Part of the Scott Boyd from uh, Portsmouth, Ryan. Right? couple of questions, really, I think. Uh, I guess maybe a quick summary. The legislature passed a budget that included wording that allows for the transfer of the bridge from Rideot to the bridge building. Yes. Sir. And the governor signed it. Signed it. It allows. Does it, does it demand? It does not require. Does not require. So at whose discretion does the DOT director the, get to decide no. that this is a bad idea and it doesn't happen? It was the intention of the legislation to transfer and to implement the tolls, mm -hmm. subject to the federal requirements. Right. That was the intention. Mm -hmm. um, so if the if the environmental process plays out and no no change to that decision is made, that would be the path that would be on. Would be to implement the tolls. Right. And, and, to, and to effectuate the transfer from Rida to the Turpiker Bridge. So this to, is part of the process. So to unring the bell, we would need to ring it again a different way. The legislature would have to submit new legislation saying we changed our mind, and the governor would have to sign that into law to undo it. That would be one way, yes. One way. You don't have the authority to say, as the director of the DOT, I think this is a bad idea for the state, and I will not implement it. Um, no. Does Mr. Darlington at the Bridge and Turnpike Authority have the ability or his board to say, we will not accept it? I suppose technically they do. Okay. So all these people, all they want to know is how do we prevent tolls from happening on Scotland Bridge. So there's two ways so far. Unring the bell petition the bridge and turnpike authority to publicly state in their meetings that they don't want this bridge and they don't want this idea so thanks for offering it but we won't accept it and therefore we won't toll it that possibly it needs to be looked at technically possible possibly i'm offering solutions to these folks who want no toll third in my list of solutions to this problem and this I've watched you dance around because that's your profession to dance. Who is the next decision maker who can say no? The Federal Highway Administration. Who? Who are you going to address at the Federal Highway Administration? We will address it to the Division Administrator. Okay, he has a name. Dan Berman. He has an email address. He does. Would the Rhode Island Department of Transportation make his email address available to us? Yes. Okay, people, all 26,000 of you, you need to send an email to that address. He is your decision maker. He needs to say no. That stops. The governor has no control. The federal government is the next decision making point. Uh, yeah. Governor cannot override the federal government. Well, no, that's. I, I think you're you're going a little bit off track. How am I going the off go, track? The governor is the governor. He can make a decision. He can make all the decisions he wants. Right. The federal but he can't trans. He cannot put a toll on this bridge while the federal government. The federal concurs. federal government has to concur with our environmental review process. Yeah. Right. Twenty-six thousand email messages. Twenty-six thousand email messages or more to the guy in the federal government who can say no. He has an ethical standard to uphold in his job. He's not going to be able to say no to 26,000 citizens who say this is not right. Okay? Yeah, He's going to provide that. Get it from the Federal Highway Administration. It's probably on the, you can get it on the website. Right. That's the email address that everyone needs to focus on right now. Not the governor, not the legislature. You need to unring a bell there. That's very difficult. What you need to find is the next point at which this can be stopped before there are no home points. And I think he's it. 
after he does his thing and says, okay, you don't have another decision maker that you can appeal to. They've already made up their minds. And this thing's gonna happen. You got one more bite at it, I think. You probably could put in a referendum to repeal the law. Bunch of things you could do, but they're all gonna happen years from now. You wanna stop it? I think you got one more shot. Thank you. Um, I live in Hibberton and I'm a real estate agent with my office in Portsmouth. So first of all, personally, I go, I go, I go back and forth over the bridge, geez, six, seven times back and forth, back and forth, because I show houses. My children do karate, so that's another three times a week. My mom lives in Bristol, so that's another three or four times a week. My mom goes to work in Fall River, and she lives in Bristol, so she has to do that every single day. So personally, my pocket's gonna be hit big time. Um, as far as real estate, how am I supposed to ask someone from Westport to pay $4 to go look at a house in on a clinic island and then pay four bucks to get back home? That's gonna basically put a huge damper on the real estate business. It's gonna affect the housing market big time. Um, the, all, our, all the values of our homes are going to fall. Um, we're going to sell less houses on the island and in Tiverton, which means our taxes are going to be higher again. Um, it's it's, it's going to be very difficult. So that's going to hit a lot of real estate agents um, and a lot of real estate companies. Um, I'm also a member of Tiverton Stock. We have put together a business impact study and a personal impact study. And we just started it, last seven days we started handing out our business impact study. Because I heard that you guys did one, but I didn't hear it. No, we, didn't, we haven't done an impact study yet. We were just, what we were doing is outreach to get feedback from the businesses so that there can be input to our study. Oh, okay, so for, from the businesses, I heard there were only one or two from Kevin and, and I didn't even hear which ones they were. Okay, so what's the answer? So we, we sent uh, the questionnaire to all of the members of the Newport County Chamber of Commerce who are business members in Tiverton. Um, How, uh, How many in Tiverton? How many in Tiverton? About uh, 30. How many well, in Bristol? I just, I just no, I don't know. It's not drawing. I didn't get any in Bristol. We didn't, we didn't send them to Bristol. We sent it. We sent it. We sent it. We sent it. Of all members of the Newport County Chamber, which I am, I didn't get one. So I handed out now, over a hundred of my business surveys to um, businesses in Tiverton, and not one received yours. I hit over a hundred businesses. Then I went to Portsmouth and started handing out another hundred fifty, and nobody had received yours except for my group. And that's because someone asked you guys to specifically send it to her. So I'm not sure if you're hitting the right businesses. I'm not even sure what businesses you're hitting. Don't, please, don't be disrespectful to this. This is my livelihood, and doing this is shrugging me off. That's very disrespectful. I'm addressing you politely. I appreciate the response. We sent it out to the mail list provided to us by the Bureau of Chamber of Commerce of all their members that had emails. That had emails. How about getting on a list of the businesses from the local town hall, or driving down Main Road and dropping some off, or asking someone? No, the city of Town is right there. He did not give you a list of businesses. No, this, this, uh, Nancy gave him a list of businesses in Tiverton? That's not true. So I talked to Nancy now. But what's your point? My point is that, if you really want to know, being rude again to me, is that you did not do a proper survey of the businesses in Tiverton. I went to 100, nobody received your survey. So I'm not sure what kind of data you're going to include in your study. That's my point. And I also went to Portsmouth. So I don't think the data that you have from Portsmouth is valid. Either. Now, with that being said, I uh, absolutely. We I've only done it for seven days. I've already gotten about sixteen back. So once we run through our whole thing, yes, we'll definitely be providing you with the data. Just leave me whatever your email, phone number, contact information. In addition, I've done personal impact studies. We've handed this out to a ton of people, and I know it's very late, but unfortunately, I have 150 people that asked me to read a letter to. So, do you want me to start digging in? Um, it's up to you. 
You're going to read 150 letters? They all want me to represent them here tonight. What I would suggest to you is you give us the letters. They're all going to be included in the record, just as if it's read into the, the record tonight. Okay, I just want to make sure that they all get, you know, acknowledged. Oh, of course I do. <laughs> um, so again, those people all asked me to present to you or to read every single one of those letters to show how it's going to impact them as well, and they couldn't show up. I have more coming in every day, and I also have my studies from whatever. Whatever you want to give us, and we will put it in the record as well, and we will be reviewing it all. Okay. I think I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Lewis. Roger Bennis again uh, from Tiverton. Uh, the DOT has indicated in its publications and again tonight that the, the four bridges in question represent less than 0.5% of the number of Rhode Island bridges, but represent about 22% of the bridge deck area. Right. So you use the bridge deck area as an indicator of the size or the cost of the bridge, correct? <laughs> It's an indicator of the relative size of the bridge to the, all the other bridges in the state. That's right. So therefore, if we lose our fight and we end up with the toll on the Sakana Bridge, then that toll should be proportional to the bridge deck area of the Newport Bridge. The, the, the toll is to, you, to establish an adequate revenue stream to adequately maintain all four bridges, one toll to be received from the south, one toll to be received from the north. Any comments that anybody has on how that would be distributed, we're open to that. I'm sure the Turnpike and Bridge, if it gets that far, we'll take that into consideration. So you're stating that it's not going to be proportional to the cost or the size of the bridge. It approximately $38 million a year needed to take in, to adequately maintain those four bridges. The rates that will be established are dependent, whether it's the cash rate, the discount rate, the frequent user rate, it's whatever combination of those rates will achieve a $38 million revenue so the work that's programmed for the next 10 years can be accomplished. All right, so let me interpret that. It sounds like what you're saying is that if there is a toll on the bridge, it will not be to support the maintenance on the Sakonet Bridge. It will be to provide funding, which is to be added to the tolls on the Newport Bridge, such that you have adequate funding to support all four bridges. Four bridges, correct. So it's so not it's four bridges, two sources of revenue, one from the south, one from the north, distributed to the bridges as they need them. The most, the Pell Bridge is the largest, has the greatest need in the 10-year capital plan for improvement. It will, the Pell Bridge will take most, the, the more of the revenues. Sconnet Bridge, the newest of the bridges, smallest of the bridges, has a lower cost. All right, so really, the toll on the bridge would not be to support the maintenance on that bridge. It would be to provide funding for the overall plan for maintenance of the four bridges. Exactly. Which is something that I think most of the people here are in disagreement with. I understand that. Because you think, like the gas tax. That, that brings up the gas tax. The gas tax is 33 cents a gallon, right? Yes. Would the DOT have a funding problem if it received the 33 cents a gallon gas tax, short, all of it. The shortfall that's been identified, about $285 million a year, that would be equal to about a 70 cent gas tax, in addition to the three. We're not gonna do that in a gas tax. We're not gonna make up our shortfall with get, even getting all of the gas tax. It would help, it would go a long way, but then RIPTA would not be funded. So the basic, 
basic problem is even though Connecticut supplies all of its gas tax and it's sufficient to keep their roads and bridges, Rhode Island can't do the same thing. Connecticut has a higher gas tax. Connecticut also has a shortfall in its transportation funding. Connecticut is also investigating tolling. So really, the, the shortfall in funding is really generated by the legislature because the legislature does not provide adequate funding to the DOT to maintain the funding. That's correct. So you're relying, I shouldn't say you, it's more the governor and the legislators that are not in Newport and Bristol counties are relying on the people of Newport and Bristol counties to supply the money. You know what's so, it's you know I, I would I will give you my card. I would love to sit down with you. It's after midnight. This gentleman hasn't spoken yet. I've got to send this crew home and I will sit and talk with you at your leisure. I have a few more quick items and I'll let him go first. You guys. Yes. Hi, my name is Mike Altschuler. I live in Westport and I worked in uh, Middletown, Newport for 42 years, paid taxes to Rhode Island way more than I did to Massachusetts. So I feel like I'm sort of an honorary Rhode Island, uh, if you will. Um, so, you know, when the Newport Bridge was built, of course we had a huge bond and we had this debt that had to be paid. And so it was decided that the best way to uh, establish a group, the Turnpike Authority, to handle that, and that kind of made sense. But when the debt payment was, when the debt was paid off, and we were strictly in the maintenance mode, it seems to me that somebody ought to be considering abolishing the, the Turnpike Authority and, and bringing those functions into the DOT. Because any fool knows if you've got two organizations, two infrastructures, you've got duplication, and you've got inefficiency, and that means lost money. And God knows we can't afford to have lost money. So number one, I just don't understand why we're turning another, or thinking about turning another bridge over to an organization that we really ought to be thinking about trying yes. to let me abolish. Let me respond to that. The because the Turnpike and Bridge has a dedicated source, for re source of revenue, the tolls on the Pell, it has been able to maintain those bridges adequately for their entire service life. It's going through a multi-hundred million dollar rehabilitation of the Pell Bridge and tens of millions on Hope but if, over the next 10 years. But if that money was available to the DOT, you could do the same thing. And we would be spreading it across all the 800 well, bridges. You, you wouldn't have to. Somebody could say those tolls are strictly for those bridges. It's a, yeah. So anyway, I, I just look at maybe the inefficiency isn't as great as I think it is, but I look at their new building and I just know, you know, from a, a logistics point of view, that there's got to be a significant amount of inefficiency, whether that's a million or 10 million, I don't know, a year, but it just seems to me somebody ought to be looking at that. The, the other thing is that I believe when, they first, when we first had tolls on that bridge, I believe you still could buy for $10, you could buy 10 tokens. And so the, basically the fare was a dollar. That was 45 years ago. And now it's 87 cents or 84 cents, whatever it is. So. I'm just wondering why we haven't inflated that to especially uh, account for the, the excess uh, maintenance costs as they've increased. Well, of course, but, but if the main consumer of the money to do the repairs and do the maintenance is the Newport Bridge and it requires more maintenance, then you would think that you would want to increase those tolls slightly. Yeah. 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 Listen, gentlemen, folks, um, I hit my well, I, just <laughs> I just want to say one thing. Real quick. Like, since I live in Massachusetts, you know, I'm just surprised at how many people are upset about 87 cents. Can you imagine how I feel about $4? I, I find that somewhat um, un-American to be looking at penalizing people, especially people who live in southeastern Massachusetts, because many of them work in Rhode Island and pay Rhode Island taxes. And God, that bridge was paid 80% with federal funds, which are, which my taxes. So I, I'm a pretty strong supporter of that bridge, just like a Rhode Island. And so why should I pay you know, almost more than four times what a Rhode Island person? 
just doesn't seem right. And I don't know if anybody's looking at that. 